Now, the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has claimed his monthly salary as a Nigerian senator does not go beyond 750,000 naira. However, a former senator, Sheikh Hussani, in 2018, had disclosed that lawmakers received uh, about 13.5 million naira every month for running costs, apart from their basic salary. Now, this makes me ask the question, how high is the cost of governance in Nigeria? Well, let's uh, introduce our guests. We have a new guest joining us in the studio, Boston Ario is just joining us, the political analyst. It's good to have you join us, Boston. Thank you. Ron. And of course, we still have Rachman Adebi here in the studio with us. Rachman, it's good uh, to have you stay with us. Thank you. So let's just delve into it. I'll start with you, of course, Bosun. Um, we all know there was a row at a time when we were right. all screaming about how much National Assembly members take home. For me, the most ridiculous was um, hardship allowance. And I wondered <laughs> to myself, <laughs> how hard can their lives be? So now, the new Senate president is saying, oh, I just take home 750,000 naira. Is, is he trying to play a game of sorts or make, us, make himself look good to us so we you know, somewhat doubts tension, so we don't ask too many questions. I think it is um, plain mendacious on his side to come and um, tell Nigerians that it takes home 750000 a month. In as, um, in as much as he may not be lying, but he's not telling the truth. Yes, 750000 is is the um, is lawmaker's um, basic monthly salary. Mm -hmm. But they have these generous, generous packages mm -hmm. That they get, for example, like you mentioned, um, like um, the um, Senator Show Sonny mentioned mm -hmm. a year ago, that they get a whooping 13.5 million in running costs mm -hmm. without a clear, spelled out uh, directives of how the money should be spent. Mm -hmm. That's not even, that's, that's not it. They also get 200 million naira in constituency projects in which all they have to do is they'll be told to go to a particular agency go with any project of choice and the money is there for them to assess. It is zonal. So they get the money, mm. you know, it is zoned and it comes to them each to each senator each, uh, each and every time. So it, at the end of the day it gets to every senator. So if you put all of this together and enjoy it they cost Nigeria over five hundred and forty thousand dollars every year. I tell you what, Nigerian national um, assembly members earn the highest in fact they earn the highest almost the highest in the world, seconded by, I think, um, I think Kenya or one of those East African countries. And yet, the average civil servant is begging for 30,000 naira as minimum wage. Yeah. And we know how long it took for them to even accept to pay that, because it's at some point some governors decided that they were not going to pay that much. We also have the issue where pensioners are still dying, you know, in long lines, trying to verify and double verify to get their yeah, miniature funds. And these are their monies, by the way, not necessarily government's money. Mm -hmm. And some of them die while trying to get that. So if we are saying that governance is for serving the people, the service to the nation, where do we draw the line with these monies? Well, um, I think first and foremost, with the, the statement of 750 million or thousand, thousand is you know it's uh, what we call half truth but in this case it's not just half truth it's not even up to half in terms of the truth but and, that's his basic salary even the the presidential advisory committee chairman uh, that's uh, professor sesesage came up not not too long ago to say it's 15 million in real sense and the question is what is your take home how much are you taking from the coffers of the Treasury of Nigeria that goes to you directly as a person. Mm -hmm. And the question is, a whopping 15 million goes to you monthly. And when you do that in a year, you are talking about three, uh, 330 million goes Let's to one person. Let's not forget the welcome package, by the way. Yeah, no, 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 let's even stay on that first. <laughs> and by the time you begin to add the welcome package Furniture. and add the 200, uh, the 200 million. Cost. So it means that at the end of a year you are costing Nigeria about 540 million so the, so where are we how are we better off as a people who is ravaged by disease by lack of infrastructure by so many other things literally by even, everything is we have lack of everything yeah so but the question I have been saying to Nigerians that 
we are beginning to yield into results now because they've played this they served us the first uh, the first ball and the first ball is for him to come out to say he's earning 750. i think nigerians should now come out and say if that's what you tell us you earn please stay with 750 and and do us a law that says that no other allowances will be arrogated to let me you jog your, let me jog your memory just in case you've forgotten there was a time when people were asking, Nigerians were asking, show us a breakdown. I think it was, um, yeah, just Sarakis, yeah. Yeah, it was a, show us a breakdown the, assembly, yeah. of what you take. What is your budget? We didn't see anything. We had a piece of paper, some <laughs> ridiculous piece of paper that did not detail what their budget was. They just gave us some funny things that still didn't yeah, add up. Of course, they call it operating allowances so, and, what, and what have you. Why do you think that the National Assembly, I like to use this term, will cut off their nose to spite their face when they know what they benefit from this? And of course, the RMFAC, I think that's what they're called. No, no, they're, 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 they're are the ones who, Yes, they're the ones in charge and they're an arm of the executive. Now, when the president moved into office, he and his vice slashed their salary down by 50%. I hope that's still being done, by the way. <laughs> but the that National Assembly know. refused. And don't forget, they also had the saga of the Pojo vehicles where some people got and some didn't get and there was a row. Do you ever see, uh, I'm coming to you now, Bosom, do you ever see this happen? Because he's trying to paint a picture that we have to tell them to do this. Do you see them doing that for us if they really? are serving us? I think um, for you to tackle a problem, you need to go to the root cause. Mm. And then if you want to have a sustainable solution to a problem, you must start from the top, up to the bottom. Um, why do people run for office in Nigeria? People that run for offices are they professionals in, the, in, in their respective fields? Do they have a life out of you know, being a politician? Mm -hmm. So when we begin to answer all these questions and put the right holes in the right pegs, it will perhaps help us to you know, solve this problem on the long run. Mm. To answer your question, um, I'll, take a, I'll draw a case study from the president of, of Uruguay. You know. mm -hmm. he, he earns $12,000 a year. Sorry, per month, sorry. I was per about month. to wonder what you <laughs> <laughs> month. And then he gave an order for 90% of that salary to be directed towards supporting small and medium scale entrepreneurs and businesses and for poor people mm. from his salary. So if you see a leader of a country making such sacrifice and such decision, it's going to not only encourage you know, his other arms of government, but the private investors, and it will, it will trickle down it will have a ripple effect in the entire Does country. Does that also not have to do with the value systems of that country? Because in Nigeria, your president is earning 50% of his salary. That's not, that hasn't changed the mind of anybody else, not that's even what, the governors, that's, that's not even that's what I'm ministers. Saying. That's what I'm saying. It, so you can make such decision. I mean, 50% is a lot, but 50 to, um, to 50 and 90 are also very, different, very, 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 very far apart. Yeah. You can only make such decision when you have maybe your own you know, business, if you're a successful business person, and then you go into governance for love of country to change the problems that have become the norms that you are tired of, that wakes you up every morning, that keeps you up at night, that you have spent time and years with your team building solutions for, and then you're waiting for that opportunity to get into office and enact these laws and prescribe these, these policies that will solve all of these problems. Mm -hmm. so, when our political parties are not driven by ideologies, they don't have particular mantras that the party is saying, you know what, this A and B C party, A, B, C party, we believe that every Nigerian should have clean water and primary health care that is free. We don't care about power. We don't care about um, telecoms. We don't care about all of this. But us, what we care about is clean water and primary health care. What we call that party the Green Party? Call it whatever. <laughs> so one, one, once we, we start having parties, we start having like, parties that are driven by, by such ideologies. So, and if parties are to merge tomorrow, for example, let's say that Green Party wants to merge with APC tomorrow, APC can say on the strength of what you stand for, which is, you know, primary health care, 
which of course determines the lifespan of, of a nation, determines uh, um, how viable the, the populace would be, mm. how productive they would be. You know, given these your policies, we align with it on, on, on all of these fronts, and then let's come and form a party together. So you, that way you cannot find a, somebody from that party saying he's going to join PDP that does not value the that they value. So we are going to then begin to decimate this mission to the general public and to the you know, politicians in the making that you need to actually choose a stand. So all of this is just, is just is ruffled up. And that is why we have problems in almost every sector. And like you said earlier, that we have lack of everything. I don't, I mean, I, I don't particularly subscribe to that. Because Nigerians, we are brilliant people. You know, so uh, what I meant thinkers. is, I understand. We literally understand. haven't been able to get up so to forty percent right. of anything. Education, mm. there's a dearth. Same thing for medical healthcare. Have yeah. you been to a university teaching hospital anywhere in this country? You would literally it's deplorable. whip. It's deplorable. It's deplorable. Yesterday, I was going home from work and I was listening to the radio, and somebody told. I called the radio station and said he wanted to. Um, he was sick about something was wrong with him, and they said go to loose. And he said, "Let's loot, kill you there." <laughs> That's what he said. To me. Exactly, he said that to the radio uh, presenter because he's been there and he thinks that it's a terrible place to be at. You know, so if we see that. There's so many bad things happening in our system. We need to start from somewhere. Now, you're talking about ideologies, which I don't know if we're ever going to have, because we've never really built our political parties based on ideologies. I don't know when we're going to start doing that. But away from the ideologies, how do we build? Because we have to start from our value systems. We, they have been practically eroded. Let's start from there. Right. Maybe when, I don't know how old you are, but when you were in school, you know, we valued certain things that we no longer have been taught in schools these days. So we literally lost those things. Maybe we should start from there. Well, um, charity begins at home, they say. <laughs> you know, and growing up as a child, uh, what used to be uh, uh, um, the, 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 the important thing that your parents tells you, I mean, I will speak for myself, being Yoruba is that you know, I'm all over you, Joe, or like being a good child, being a good person is beyond, you know. It's more than gold. It's more than gold, yeah. yes. You know, and that's, that word will never leave your, leave your consciousness if you're being told from a very young age. So that will guide and inform all of your actions. Yes, we may need, we, act, we absolutely need to, you know, check our value system and then put certain, you know, corrections to it. But more than anything else, I believe that to aspire for a position of authority is to be pregnant with ideas, is to be zealous, is to be filled you know, with, with rage of wanting to change what has become the normalcy that mm. is wrong. And once you don't have that drive, it cannot, it's not sold, it's not bought, it's something that is impure, something that you must have. And it is what, you know, sometimes, um, when a leader doesn't even have to exactly open the and speak, if you, you know, take certain positions, the general public will see that this is where you're leaning towards, and that will send even a stronger message to the, to the people than when you actually open your mouth and speak. Okay. When President Kurt, uh did, uh, uh, what's it called, approved that for his salary and his, and his deputy, his vice, rather, to be cut down by 50%, yes, we find it very quite laudable, but, you know, the President, as you may know, he's ran for three times before he became a president now. He's been he's in head of state before. He's not exactly, you would not say, I mean, he, he actually parties himself as, as uh, Mr. Incorruptible because of his track record. So it is fair to say maybe he's not driven, he's not driven by money. So, Rachman, take it from there. He's saying, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he's saying, but most of our politicians are driven by hunger. Um, I said money now. I'm just saying, <laughs> I said money. Um, to, uh, uh, in a bid to amass wealth or get their share of the national cake. So obviously, they're not necessarily there for us, the people. And then again, yesterday we were just talking about the electoral process, how we're not sure how transparent INEC is and the system is still the same 20 years down the line. If these are all of the things that we're dealing with 20 years into democracy, yeah, America is like 100 years, you know, in this business. And, you know, as we always make excuses, but those mistakes that other countries have made are things we should learn from. Why are we not learning from them? We're not learning because our fundamentals are wrong. 
And when your fundamentals are wrong, everything you place on that going forward, you know, probably will not sit properly well. And as a people, you know, when we talk about value system, value system is something that should be perverse in, in, in its entirety. And let's take, because when we talk about this value, some people think uh, it's something from the moon. No, let's break it down. Take the word care, for instance. As a people, when you do your work diligently and you should care with it, we will see through you the passion to deliver that, that, that work or that service. It will show because you will be dedicated. A very good example, let's even leave politics, let's go to the street. Let's take a typical artisan in Nigeria. Give him a work of nine to five to do. What do you get at the end of the day? Are you satisfied as a person? of what you get out of a service. Are you not going back to say, why did you do this? You need to do a lot of supervision to get the best out of the personality. Is that what we want? Is that, and take somebody from Southern uh, Africa, for, for instance, from maybe Botswana. You see them doing that same work, not even talk of Togo here. You do that same work diligently and through details and they will complete and come so back to you. So you're saying that it's ingrained so in us, the, we what cannot I'm saying, do what right? I'm saying, what I'm saying that it's not that we cannot do right, but our leaders have not helped us to do right. But do our leaders what? are a reflection of us as a people. Be, no, let me tell you, you are a product of your parent. Your parent is not a product of you. Do you understand? So our leaders, we talk to them as leaders because they've been around, they've been the one that set the policy, they've been the one that set the practice. What is the practice? When you begin to, you know, deplete the resources of a nation and the younger ones are seen, you suddenly become a counselor and everybody around, you begin to, because you're dipping your hand in the till, you begin to oppress them. What do you think they will do? If they can't come, they will, if they see you long enough, and they can't get to the opposition, then they take the other route. And that's what we find ourselves getting into a lot of criminalities that you found around our system. Okay. So we need to begin to tell ourselves, we need those ethics, those principles of value system that helps us that we must be incorruptible, we, you know, you must have integrity, you must okay. be sincere, honesty must be your bond. You know, all these things are should be ingrained in us, in, in, our, in our system as a people. And then for the leaders, we have to lead by example. Because okay. how do you lead by example? The president has led by example. And is it the only leader we have in Nigeria? No, one, one, one tree cannot make a forest. Okay, all right. So we need to learn from the president. Uh, Boston, are you? Uh, Rakwan Adewi, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we have much. to go, we do not have time. It's been a very interesting conversation. Uh, we'll take a break uh, and when we come back, I'll give you my take. In fact, you know what? We're not going on that break. I'll give you my take right away. Now we live in a country where we have leaders who are supposedly leading us, hopefully, to Uhuru, a promised land. We are categorized as one of the developing countries. At some point in our lives, we used to be the giant of Africa, but oh, how the giant has fallen, because there are a lot of things that are going wrong. There's insecurity, there's bad health care, there's bad education. Everything is literally sliding down. And yet, we have a government. So it is our place we the people, to tell the government what we need, stand by those words until they give us what we want. We cannot go to sleep anymore. You know, I hear people, when we bring up these issues, people say, oh, yeah, it's us versus them. You know, they have the police, the army. Well, we have the power because it's the power that we have that we give to them. We're more than these people. They're a handful of people. We give them a job to do. And if you give someone a job to do and the person doesn't do a great job, what do you do? You fire them and get someone else who's able to do the job. I hear somebody saying, oh, it's not so easy. Well, let's try. My name is Mary Anakon. Have a lovely day.